the one you could love, Lynn. Um, before the testimony, it took a lot of boldness to be here, and I've actually been staring at Mrs. Debbie because she's the whole inspiration to all this. I am actually someone who lives a very bad lifestyle, like anything bad you can think of, I've actually done it. I don't do normal work. The kind of work I like doing is PRO work in clubs. I used to have a lot of piercing on my face and all that. When I talk about short clothes, it's directly under my butt. But I started following Debbie. I started watching a lot of her videos. I sing. I like the way she sings and all that. So I said to myself that so one can actually be well covered and still be fashioned because I like to be fashioned very well. So... After all this, I started following her, I tried to pray, and before this, I'm someone who, I actually hated church, because my dad is a pastor. He left my mom, he left the family, a lot of things, and I'm like, is this how pastors are? And where he is in a church where he says he's pastoring, is a woman that he followed. So I'm like, what's the whole essence? Is there actually this God, or are they just faking all these things? So there was no reason for me to believe. My mom tried, everybody tried. I come to church, I've done the foundation class before, the maturity class, everything, but I, I could say I just did it for fun. But after I started following Debbie, I got interested. In the dream of the night, I saw Debbie. She came to me, and then she was like, let's walk together. I'm like, walk to where? I'm not well covered. She said, don't worry. Let me just walk. You come and tell the world your story. I said, okay, we're walking together. And before I knew it, I was well clothed. I got close to Daddy. I was like, sir, how did you do it? He sang the song that says, no more fear, no more limitation. I can now see Jesus face to face. I woke up the next day. I found myself reading the Bible. I found myself doing a lot of things, the same things I hated to do. I started coming to church. Now, after that... I, I, you, there are some details you left so that people may understand the real import of this situation. She was not just a club girl. She was a row of clubs, nightclubs. She did all kinds of drugs. She was naming the drugs there, behind there. She said she's the type that can cut somebody with a knife. And whatever vice you could ever imagine, she did all. And it was just looking at our sister, Mrs. Deborah. Now you can continue. Yeah, so bad that I could actually travel from state to state because of drugs. I mean, I was, I call it so much money, I'm living life to me. So as I woke up the next day, I started to do all these things, reading, praying. I still didn't have the push to come to church though. But with time, I started coming and I didn't have decent clothes to go to church, of course. I came to church the first day on trousers. They took me to someone that gave me clothes. And the way the devil wanted to have it, I went home. I tried the clothes on. They did not size me. Only one. I said, okay, I will keep wearing this one to church since that is how it wants to be. Then the next thing was, God, how do I work with my friends? Because I know the kind of friends I have. Permit me to speak pigeon. Now me, they buy smoke they give them, I mean they give them money. If they get lighter, say they get shorted of anything, they call me lovely, normally. So I was like, God, help me stay away from these people. I don't know how to preach to them. I'm still helping myself yet. And daddy mentioned something in that dream. He said, don't look for a perfect church. Look for a perfect God in your church. So I started following all these things. And then I was like, after I said, God, how do I stay away from these people? I was at home because I, I consistently prayed. I started listening to the tongues and I started also speaking in tongues. I joined the foundation class and all that. So I was at home one day. My sister came to the house. She knocked. I opened the door. I was sleeping, oh, but I'm very alert. My brother came. They knocked. I opened the door. It was later in the evening that I was not hearing our neighbor saying, your friends, those are your gangs. Now they can't find you. You not open the door. I said, me when not they sleep deep. But I did not hear anything like that. I believed it was God. These days, I could actually see it. it was, it's after they have gone, they will come back and say, I have a love that I call your house, you know, deal. And I don't go anywhere again these days. I'm at home. God made me invisible to them. They don't even come close to me to ask for now, anything. I also like to cut in there so you can understand briefly because of time's sake. Now, these friends will come. These were the ones that could lure her back to the thing she had come out of. Now, she had prayed, Oh, Lord, I can't preach to them. Help me. 
shield me away from them. They will come and knock. She may be seated awake. She won't hear the knock. But if an ordinary person without any wrong motive comes and knock, she will open, she will hear. Now she will sit like this and they will pass. She will see them, but those gang will not see her. They will pass. God shielded her from them. Now, finally. And then finally, after all these things happened and I became dedicated, I was now wondering, my phone spoiled. Um, my baby, because she's in school, there was no means for her to go to school again. Feeding became, everything became terrible. But I'm this kind of person that I'm an extremist. When I put my mind to a thing, that's what I actually do, no matter what. So it's, I have now put my mind to God, and it's like this. I say, to God, you will make me get this mind to so do this thing. So I sure say, now nah, like this, I go, they go, if they look me, make me and my baby, they suffer. No wahala. So I had a dream in the night, just day before yesterday. Daddy came to the house, and I was wondering, so what I do in this house. I was asking my brothers, when did he come? We don't have anything to serve them. What can I offer? I was going outside to see if I could get something. And when I came into the house, the whole place changed. There was food. There was excess of everything. And when I went for the home cell service yesterday, God, I got a lot of things. God favored me with a lot. I am so grateful. And I, I've been shying away from this testimony. There was a day that he mentioned a Hainia case. I was in church. And it was actually me. I actually got healed. But I was like, ah, what will people say? Because I know some people know lovely. I don't want to look me. Me and they pray normally. I've had different healings in this church, but I don't come out because I'm like, I bet people go talk. But as it is like this, I no longer care what people say because I feel living for Christ is having life. Please stand one minute. This testimony, we might as well share the grace and go. This is what church, this is what church is all about. Changed lives. Transformed destinies. This is what church is all about. I want you to listen to me. I see a lot, I see a lot of people overwhelmed with emotion. Don't bother. Don't bother. You will, you will be handled. I want to say something. Please, I want you to listen to me. This girl got lost in a pastor's house. Lost to hell. You are the brother. Brother is here to corroborate the testimony. Father abandoned wife and children. Huh? That's true. So many years ago. You are the firstborn. Yes, sir. I've been carrying all of them. And you are carrying mind. all of them. Yes, sir. And took off in the name of another church with another woman. Till the girl said, if this is what it is to go to church, I won't go to church. Please, parents, I want you to know that your actions, your action is doing something to your children. Children are the heritage of the Lord. We don't own children. God owns the children. We are caretakers. And one day, all of us will stand before God to give account of the precious children he gave to us. What was your influence on their lives? And that influence, well, how did it lead them? I talked to a young girl yesterday. She said, if the way I grew up, if that is what marriage is, I don't want to be married. And I said to her, if your physical marriage was not working in the physical setting, what about the marriage of your pastor? Can't you look at your senior pastor and his family and his wife and himself? Does that not give you an inspiration? She said it does. I said, that is where to look. I said, when I grew up, we didn't have anything that you would call a, fa a home, a family. 
It wasn't a family. It was a polygamous, very, very, I mean, the situation wasn't what you would call a home. But I grew up to determine that I'm going to have something that is worth it. That if I grew and I didn't see an example of what to call a home, I will offer an example. Leave him. Oh, I think I know your mother then. I've prayed for him before in the Rewan church. This uh, young man is about, are you tw 23 years old now? I prayed for him before. The heart condition. I'm sure. It's a, it's an artist. It's an artist. It's a, an artist of, of Nollywood movie as well. I, your mother, your, his mother brought him to me in the rear one, and I prayed for him for a heart condition then. Your mother is meant to be around too. She's walking in worry now. All right. You know, how you are conducting your life, the things you are doing before your children is determining their destiny. I told that young girl, I said, draw inspiration. Make up your mind that what you saw as a child, your children will not see. And the kind of home you experience your children will not experience. That's the decision to make. The things that heart instruct, according to Benjamin Franklin, things can make you better or bitter. It, when you become bitter, that is the negative reaction. And you can become better because of what you have faced. Please, consciously, function with the consciousness that you live not just for yourself, but for your children and for your family and for your next generation so that they can step into a life that is better than your own life it is well with you sister congratulations I'm happy for you my wife will walk with you and ensure that both you and your baby are in shape and I would like to see all of you again I'd like to join you in one of the movies I'm sure you let's work something out so that we can act one movie together <laughs> Give the Lord a big clap of hand. Father, thank you. Adonai, thank you for what church is all about. Changing lives, transforming destinies, changing stories. We worship you, we honor you, and we adore you. Be glorified, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. This, the clip of this should also be caught as a testimony to be spread throughout today, what church is all about. If you can title it, it's possible. What church is all about.